Hello everyone, it is Shun Weave Art and I am finally back again uh, and I'm going to be doing a slight different video. Um, it's going to be a normal painting video but I'm also going to kind of make it a review video at the same time. Um, when I filmed this at the time I was a bit ill so you won't be seeing me in the video, I'm just going to do a voiceover for it instead. Um, review wise I'm going to be reviewing the Royal Talons Van Gogh watercolour paper pad which I got a while back. It has 12 sheets and it's also gummed around the sides. And I believe it was nine ninety five, same as the Royal Talons Art Creations twelve pan pocket. Um, I think it's called pocket pack or something. Um, watercolor paints. I'm going to be testing both these out with each other, and with them both being from Royal Talons, I thought it was kind of a good idea, I guess. Um, pocket box. I'm just looking at the video now. It's pocket box. It was called, and it was also nine ninety five. Um, I will link down the whole video that I did of details a few months back. Um, that both these were in. Um, and you can have watch them, and I'll also link some of my other whole videos if you're interested. Um, details is a little shop in Newcastle. Um, in the northeast of England. Um, it's very good. It sells a lot of good stuff. Um, but I thought I'd just try these both out. Um. Obviously, you'll see me faffing around with both the package and trying to get them out because it took me a while. I don't know why. Uh, cardboard was defying me. Um, but I did manage to get it out. I will also show swatches in this video of the paints. They only, unfortunately, the watercolours uh, just came with numbers. It doesn't mention anything about pigments or light fast, unfortunately. So there won't be too much to talk about during the swatches. Um, and as for the watercolour pad, obviously, I will just do an actual painting to show you how that goes and what it is like. But I hope you enjoy the video uh, and I will just pretty much just get straight into the swatches side of things. So using my Sea White sketch pad uh, that I use to do all my swatches in, I'm going to swatch the Art Creations Talons um, watercolour pocket box palette. There is 12 colours in this. Um, they unfortunately don't have any mentioning of light fast uh, names, pigments, things like that. So I'm just going to assume them with it being more of a, a student range um, to use. That That's probably why. Um, they do um, have a couple of other things like Amsterdam acrylics. I know they do canvas boards because I've gotten them before. Um, oil pastels, oils. Um, out of all of them, when I was checking Royal Talon's website, oils and their pastels seem to be the most popular thing. They were the things that came up first for me. Um, and then obviously the Amsterdam acrylics are also quite popular. I have quite a lot of them and really do enjoy them. They have majority a life fast of three stars. So maybe these do have a life fast. They just haven't mentioned anything. Um, but obviously I won't say anything about that because it doesn't say on the packaging. So I'm going to assume not. Um, when I did the swatches for these, uh, I was quite impressed. The colours were really nice. Um, but I did have to do a few coatings of each colour because they were a little light to begin with. But I did blame that probably is on the wax film that most pans have on them when you first buy them. Usually once you add some water, the actual pigment comes out a bit more. Um, and then my only other issue really was um the more light brown, which gives kind of more of like a sandy colour, was really light and was quite hard to get pigment to. Um, and the black kind of didn't really come out as black. It was more of like a dark grey, more of Payne's grey. Um, so it isn't, if you're looking for something that's like jet black, Um, I would definitely probably go with like the Cotman watercolours or um something more pigmented or even the professional range, just because this black isn't really black in my opinion. Um, And the more ultramarine kind colour was also very light and had more of, in person, a violet hue to it, I would have said. Um, but other than that, I didn't really have many issues with them. I really enjoyed the colours. I like them all. Um, I'm not very picky though when it comes to um, how expensive a brand is or what it's like. Um, my only other issue with this is it did come with a film coating, um, like plastic sheet on top of the colours when you first open the palette. That I don't usually mind, but this was actually like sellotape down almost to the pans and it did rip a few of them out that you'll have seen prior in the video it ripped the um white out and it did start popping out the one of the yellows and the black um so obviously i was a bit more gentle taking it off um i wasn't too bothered about it actually pulling the pans out it was more i was a bit cautious in case i pulled the actual colors out of the pans themselves um that to me was just a little bit i felt like it didn't need it um you could have just put a normal film lid on it and just kept it as that it didn't need to be like physically stuck down but that's just that um obviously first applying the colors as well to the sh uh, my swatch sheet they were much darker um but these came out they do dry really light 
most watercolors do but of every palette that i've ever gotten and um, these probably is like the lightest um dry the lightest sorry should i say than any of the other palettes i've had so not my favorite palette i've got um my favorite palette is definitely the hemi still and the mungyo um but obviously it is just student range this palette was only 9.95 and for the price i do actually believe it is priced really well um as you will see in the painting that i did they still work perfectly fine you can get some good shading detail and the color range obviously it contains most of the primary colors so you can pretty much paint a majority of things with them so i definitely think for the money worth it um, but if you're wanting something a bit more pigmented and a bit more sturdy and something with obviously a high light fast if it's like for artwork that you're selling I would definitely go for something a bit more high branded um, but in the long grand scheme of things if it's just for a hobby these definitely will work well enough. So I did some digging on the internet and actually I did end up finding what colours the Art Creations comes with and um, the names for it at least um but this is for the actual tube um pan so i'm going to assume that that's the majority of the colors that like this palette comes with um so one eight, 108 sorry was chinese white 200 is a yellow 334 is scarlet 326 is alizarin crimson 504 is ultramarine 535 is cerulean blue 617 is yellowish green 602 is deep green 227 was yellow ochre and 411 was burnt sienna 409 was burnt umber and 708 the one that was complaining about being not dark enough because it looked like black on the actual card it was meant to be Payne's gray so i did actually guess right that it was more of a Payne's gray um but just obviously from the leaflet and just seeing the numbers to me it, it does look like just a black cube so i just assumed it was going to be black but regards of that they were the colors that i managed to find the names for and um, but that's for the 12 tube pan that you can get um from their actual website uh, you can get it on jackson's art as well and um, i also found out that royal talents is a dutch company i believe a dutch brand sorry um and i think it is i don't know whether some of the items are created in holland um but they obviously own like van gogh and diff like to have different licensed brands as well so once again i'll link the um website down below because it's quite interesting in that and they do like markers and um, they do the eco line markers which i didn't realize and um, pastels they do the pencils uh they even do spray paint what i found on their website so those were a few things that i did not know and i have now found out but enough about the um actual paints themselves uh, I will finally get into the Van Gogh watercolour pad. Obviously, the once again, there isn't too much I can talk about. Um, I feel like the painting and the video will speak more uh, volume than I can about the paints because um, you'll be obviously able to see how uh, the paper um, worked with the paints and how everything went through the painting. Um, obviously, if you kind of guess by now, but I am painting quickly Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, one of my favourite films um, and also one of my favourite characters ever of all time, um, hence the red hair. Um, but I will mention how the Van Gogh obviously is royal talent as well, like I mentioned prior. Um, this pad was the same price as the actual palette, um, pocket box palette itself. It was nine ninety five. Um, so far, obviously, like most watercolour papers, um, the pages were quite thick. They were very good um from what i can feel just text wise the quality does seem really good um obviously i did a quick pencil sketch on it first um, and when i rubbed off bits off just to make it a bit lighter it had no e those um no issues there there was no ripping of the paper um throughout when using the paints as well on it um there was no issues with um sogginess or like too much bleeding going on um the paper didn't seem to buckle um or anything um with it being gummed along the sides as well it really prevents it from uh warping the paper which is what i'd have come to really love about gummed watercolor pads um because you'll always get that issue even if you um sellotape the sides or use um washi tape around the sides to give a bit of a border and to try and keep the paper straight a lot of the times it will still buckle obviously like most paper um with having water on it and um, but when they're gummed along the sides it just keeps keeps it like fixed in that place 
um, a position and just really helps. Um, and also, obviously, if you do get pain on the sides of it, it's got a layer across it, so it's not going to impact or discolor any of the other pages underneath. Um, like I said, this uh, book though only does come with 12 sheets so not a huge amount um for especially for the price um i would like a few more pages obviously um but in the long run the quality that i found of this paper it was really easy to use and i had no struggle using it um and i definitely once again would say it was worth the money uh, i really do enjoy it i have painted since this painting a few other things on it um some flower scenes and some um landscape type scenes um i even attempted um some other watercolor palettes on it just to see how they fred and to be honest in love um so this booklet um watercolor pad sorry is probably a good eight out of ten for me um one of the better ones i've definitely used um i'd probably say i prefer it even a bit more than the cotman watercolor paper that I have used before, um, which was the spiral bound book that you can get from the range, Jackson's Art, things like that. Um, so in this whole review thing, I definitely prefer the booklet over the actual watercolor palette itself. Um, it impressed me the most. Um, but without further talking, I will just let the video continue and you can hopefully just enjoy watching me paint and the struggle with the red, there was one bit where I put too much water on the hair and it did bleed a little bit into the skin. So you will see me struggle with that, trying to get it to not bleed anymore. Um, where I learned that I needed to just be patient, remove the red and let it dry before going back to it. I can sometimes be really impatient when painting, especially with watercolours. And a lot of the times that's how you get bleeding occurring, for me anyway. Uh, as you'll see, some of the um dress colour that I used yellow ochre for bled into the skin and that was once again with me being impatient I did learn my lesson though and I do end up solving it um but yes I will just let the video continue and if I think of anything else to mention I will pop back in
so that is the pretty much coming to the end of the video um of me using the watercolor paints anyway i'm just now using a fine liner to do the outlines of sally and the dress and the stitches um just to add a bit more of a visual impact um as you can probably see the watercolors look to me quite pretty um the colors are very nice um, the paper, like I mentioned prior, there has been no buckling. I had no issues with it. Um, I didn't get any of that grittly effect when using the water on it, where like sometimes the paper comes off and it buckles a little bit. Nothing like that. There was pretty much no movement of the paper, um, which I really, really do like. Um, I would definitely probably up this even more now using it to a 9 out of 10, um, um, especially for the price as well. As for the watercolour, palette um from using it the red was extremely pigmented um it, as you can tell it was the brightest out of all the shades i used um so i really did love that as red and greens and that being one of my favorite colors everything else obviously is extremely lighter in comparison and um, i know i did do a few coats though on the hair to make it obviously bright um as for casting the shadows on the dress and um in certain parts of sally's face and arms uh, I used the paints grey for the majority of it and I really didn't struggle. The colours blended together really well um, and I found it really easy. Um, and most of this as well was painted with just a light wash with no actual having to put loads of um, effort into it really. I just found that it all just worked out really simple. Um, usually I like have a bit of a struggle with paintings but this kind of all just flowed and it just went really easy. Um, I know Sally's not really the most complicated thing to paint, so maybe that also helped. But overall, the paints were really easy to use. The blending was really easy to do. The colours lasted uh, really well. I didn't really have to do many um, sw swatches and like um, coats to make any of the pigments show. Uh, only thing is obviously far lighter to them than what I'm used to. I tend to paint in gouache and acrylics, um, so I am used to things being a bit more pigmented whereas the this water colour palette is very light so if you're definitely into the more pastel range or you just want like a light wash for your paintings this is probably definitely a palette i would recommend um especially the price and it, with it just being a student range obviously really good um if you are wanting to do paintings and sell them for instance and do prints and that might not potentially be the best to use um because obviously there is no light fast rating on them so if they are going to be used as decorative pieces the paints in the long run um i kind of guarantee all this pigment and the colors would actually last and look that good in the future um but just as art and crafts and just for hobbies and that this is definitely something i would recommend um and it's definitely cost effective because i mean you get 12 colors um and the book you get 12 pa uh, pieces of paper um especially if it's just for water color i would definitely recommend them uh, overall the watercolor palette for me is probably 7 out of 10 definitely very good um just not as bright and bold as what i'm used to so it's not particularly my cup of tea uh, but i did enjoy using it and i did find it very easy to use um so if you struggle doing using watercolors i would recommend this one because they did blend really well together and i had no struggles with it uh, but that is pretty much the end of the video um that is the end of sally being painted or made should we say uh, so hopefully you do enjoy this and enjoy the video and hopefully I didn't blabber on too much and you kind of got the gist of what I was trying to explain in the video. Um, so if you like this video, give it a like and a subscribe if you want and com feel free to comment any videos you would like to see in the future and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.